Hello family and welcome back to Sussex Squad Family TV on YouTube. Now my family today is on Tuesday and you know what that means. The latest episode of Archetypes is finally out and it's called Beyond the Archetype, the Archetype, Human Being with Micaela J. Rodriguez and Candice Bushnell. And my family, in this penultimate episode, Megan explores the freedom and fulfillment that can be found when we live outside of the labels we are given by society. Now joined by Sex and the City author Candice Bushnell and actor and activist Micaela Jair Rodriguez, together they dive into an open conversation about expressing one's identity and embracing the nuances that make each of us quite simply human. This episode also features special appearances from Dr. Shefali Sabari, poet Amanda Goman, and a few voices from Megan's high school. You know, my family, yes, Megan goes back to her high school, Immaculate Heart High School. And my family, this episode was just quite amazing. I love Megan's freedom. Megan can go to Immaculate Heart without even the tarot media knowing it. And that's how you know no tablet in the UK has access to Prince Harry and Megan. They have zero access to Harry and Megan. And I love this. I love this so much. Prince Harry and Megan, if they have anything to say, they say it themselves. And I love this so much about them. Now, in this podcast, Megan talked about what Doria Ragland called her. My family, I so love this bond between Doria and Megan and how Doria, you know, just loves Megan so, so much. This is true love. This is true love. A love between mother and daughter. Doria and Megan. Doria has always been there for her daughter in good times and in bad times, I remember that Doria ran a suicide prevention marathon because at that time, now we know that indeed Megan was struggling a lot, you know, in the royal family, whereby she was being bullied and lied about every single day by the press and also by the farm, who were leaking stories against Megan to the point that Megan wanted to take her own life. So my family is because of Prince Harry. Her mom, that Megan did not go through it, through with it because of love, love, love. And that's why I love it when Megan even talks about, you know, Doria and mentions Doria in her podcast, Ashes. Now, this is what Megan had to say. Kindly hear this. But before all that, she was a theater kid growing up in Newark, New Jersey in the 90s and 2000s. And she was known simply as MJ. You know, for you, one of the things that I think is so interesting is as you've had this progression with your career and you were known for quite a long time as MJ Rodriguez, which is it true that was from Spider-Man? Yes, it was from Spider-Man. It was from my childhood days. <laughs> Peter, this is Mary Jane Watson, Anna's niece. Anna's running late. Actually, everyone calls me MJ. And then now, because as we all continue to evolve, it's Michaela J. Yes. As a child, you know, you come up with nicknames, but you don't know how much of an impact they have on other people and also how people get stuck in that nickname. They get stuck in the name that, you know, they've been calling you. My mom used to call me Boomper when I was a child. She still slips up and calls me a today, which. I <laughs> you know, I like this. I like this. Part of the reason why I like Megan's podcast on Archetypes is that it gives a platform for women to have a voice. And I like it so much. I like that, you know, women have a voice in this podcast. And I'm thankful to Spotify and to Megan for speaking about this, for giving, you know, women a platform to, you know, to have their voice, to express their opinions, to talk about their lives, to just be themselves. And I also love how Megan, you know, makes them feel so, so comfortable, you know, in this podcast. Archetypes. You know, as MJ has said that 
Her mom used to call her Bumper when she was a child. And she still sleeps up and also calls her the same thing today. And Megan also says what her mom, Doria Ragland, calls her. And this is what Megan said. I have no problem with it because, you know, who doesn't like being caught by their mom? Yes, exactly. My mom still calls me flower. See? <laughs> yeah. Don't you love it, though? Like, there's still a little piece of, like, oh, mama. I do. I'll be a 41-year-old flower. That's fine. <laughs> but, yeah. My family. I love that regardless of whether you are, you know, 40 and your mom, let's say, is 60, 60 years old, it doesn't matter because regardless of that, you will always be your mom's child. You will always be your mom's daughter. And I love this bond between Doria Ragland and Megan. This is a woman who has always been on Megan's side and always supported her daughter time and time again. And we also, we love Doria Ragland so, so much. Now, Doria Raglan is currently 66 years old, and she still calls Megan Flower. Now, the other thing that I loved about this podcast so, so much was about, you know, Michaela, Michaela Jai Rodriguez, speaking about how she handles, you know, bullies. You know, I loved that part whereby she spoke about how she handles bullies, because Megan has been a victim of bullying for so so long for so many many times and just i hope that even when you hear this you also can be able to learn how you deal with bullies now this is what Michaela Jai Rodriguez had to say in Megan's podcast Archetypes my family this is it I was just extremely feminine which was okay with, with me and not to mention I was always seen as you know, a girl until someone had mentioned, oh no, blah, 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 blah. What's the blah, 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 blah? Oh, you know the blah, 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 blah. <laughs> <laughs> it's them addressing the identity that wasn't really structured to me. Mm. And they saw it as a correction, which in my head, I was just like, no, there's no correction here. The mistake you thought you made was actually the truth. How are you so clear at this age? That was, that is wild. I guess it was the young ones around me, too. When I was seven years old in the first grade, I would always be bullied. Mm. But it never affected me because the bullying would be the exact thing that I was like, oh, this is exactly what I want to hear. This is exactly who I've been. You're not phasing me. And I think it would make the bullies upset that I didn't fall or give into it. Yeah, you didn't take the bait. Oh, no, I didn't take the bait at all because it was exactly what... I was when they were saying, why do you sound or why do you look like a girl? I would say, oh, okay, well, that's because I feel like one and keep it going. And, you know, my mom never heard that, but the kids did. And I think in those spaces where you're a child, we just are openly free and we say whatever we want. And I was always rebellious and defiant <laughs> as well as a child. Um, I went against the grain. And I think that's what kept me at seven years old. But I hadn't mentioned it to my mom until I was... 14 and that was in high school when i was able to actually have well thought out you know expressions yeah seven years old my family you've heard what she's had to say about dealing with bullies that when michaela jai was only seven years old in the first grade she would always be bullied but it never affected her because the bullying would be the exact thing that i was like oh this is exactly what she wanted to hear. This is exactly who she's, you know, been. And bullies want you to be upset. They want you to give in to them, to see you crying, to see you suffering, to see you in pain. That is what, you know, for instance, how the UK press have wanted to see Megan, in pain, crying, in tears. That's how, you know, they wanted Megan to break Megan apart with the bully. But despite all of that, you know, I love what Megan has, has done, you know. Like, she's, she has this podcast called Actors that they set these labels that hold women down. 
So my family, in a way, she's doing what, you know, Michaela Dai Rodriguez did when she was just seven years old and she was being bullied. My family, Megan, in this podcast, has dissected so many labels like difficult, the B word, and many, many other labels. And through all these words, some of these words, Megan herself has been labeled. And in this podcast, Megan has explained how things are. That these labels should not be used to hold women back. Should not be used to hold you back. And I'm glad that what Megan has done and continues to do is an amazing woman, a remarkable person who has given this remarkable women from the beginning of this podcast to where we are right now in this latest episode. Megan truly is doing a great, great job. And may she always continue doing a great, great job. I also love the fact that, you know, Megan, you know, has gone back to Immaculate Heart High School. Megan went back home to Immaculate Girls High School. And it's so, so nice, you know, to know, to see even that recording of Megan speaking to girls at Immaculate Girls High School. And they were so, so happy, you know, speaking to Megan, talking to Megan. And I just love that, you know, so, so much. It brought me, you know, great joy to see that, look, Harry and Megan can move around the U.S., can go to a place, her former high school, as she's an alumni of Immaculate Girls, you know, high school. And my family is just so, so happy. I'm just so happy to hear from Megan and what she's been able, you know, to do. Going there, having a good time with the kids there. Let me just, you know, play you a recording of, you know, what happened, you know, when Megan went to Immaculate Heart, you know, high school. And this is, you know, the beginning of the podcast. And this is it. She has such a busy schedule. Like, I don't think not so busy for this. And then, and then, Let me reverse back. One of the young women in the hallway, right in front of our lockers. And her mom was like, are you going to meet her? Are you going to meet her? And I was like, I don't think so, mom. Like, she has such a busy schedule. Like, I don't think not so busy for this. And then, and then, you like, you're like, there. And I was like, oh my God. I was like, it's my mom. It's my mom. I got to tell my mom. <laughs> <laughs> My family, that's a recording of a girl at Immaculate Heart, you know, high school, who's so, so happy to see Megan. Imagine going to the same, same high school that Megan went to. And then Megan comes back as an alumni to see you all. Imagine that. Imagine that. And then you see Megan. Oh, look, that's Megan. I'm calling my mom. I'm calling my mom. Such is how, you know, these women felt when they met Megan. And Megan is just so, so kind, so, so loving, so amazing. And my family, this is what Megan also had to say about, you know, her campus life. The girls that we once were and the women that we've become. I wanted to revisit a large piece of my origin story, my old school and explore if these labels and boxes are part of the self-identification for the young women there, or if they've given themselves the space to be a human being. Okay. Ready, team? This is all very nice and new. Isn't it a pretty campus? <laughs> oh my gosh, how funny. My locker was right over here. Which one? I was somewhere smack in the middle. I don't remember because these were your lockers when you're in high school and then the middle school lockers were up there. You've heard me talk about Immaculate Heart on this series before and the influence it's had on my life. And look, I was there from ages about 12 to 17, which are really formative years in your life. They certainly were for me. And let me just say, being back there, the energy, it was, it was palpable. Megan being back, going back to Immaculate Heart, the energy there was palpable. So how many of you ladies or gentlemen have gone back to your high school and what have you felt 
going back to high school. I want to hear your opinion about that. Kindly tell me what have you felt if you've ever gone back to high school. Tell me how you have felt about going back to high school. Did you love it? Did you hate it? I want to hear your opinion. My family, I want to hear your opinion about that. And it's clear that Megan had a good, good time at high school. And that was the moment that shaped her for the person that she is today. And this school taught her many, many things. And even in this podcast, Megan speaks about, you know, how at Immaculate Heart, they were told to, you know, do like a project of planning their own wedding. Who could have ever thought that in the future, Megan Marco, the beautiful Megan Marco, would end up marrying an amazing, amazing prince, Prince Harry, with a good, good heart. Because that is what happened to her. That is what happened to Megan. That was her destiny. That was her destiny. And now she's married with two beautiful children, children baby Archie and baby girl Libertana. They have two kids. Archie and Libertana, and they're living out there happily ever after in Montecito, California. And Megan can travel anywhere at peace. Show her husband the high school that she attended, Immaculate Heart. My family, I love this. I love this. I also love how Prince Harry has been welcomed so, so well in the US compared to how, you know, how poorly Megan was treated back in the UK. I love how Prince Harry has been welcomed. He is family. And may God keep blessing Prince Harry, Duke of Sussex. May they always continue to thrive. My family, tell me of your experience going back to your high school. I want to hear your opinion about that. Kindly, let's continue with this. I was happy to be back there. And it was also really fun, especially when I made a surprise visit and I popped into some of the young ladies in volleyball practice. My family, that is the voice of Megan going there to meeting young ladies doing volleyball, practicing volleyball. Imagine you're just one of the ladies there and you just see Megan you just see me again. Imagine that feeling. Imagine that joy and happiness you'd feel. That's an alumni of your school and a highly, highly, hugely successful alumni. One of the most famous women in the entire world, my family. I think if it were me meeting me again, I'd take a lot of photos. I'll call my mom, say, Mom. I met Meghan Markle. I met Meghan. I met Princess Meghan, Duchess Meghan, mom. I'd probably tell her that. My family, this is just, I'm just happy that for this young woman who got the chance to meet Meghan. I'm happy how Meghan can go back, is now back home in the U.S. with her husband, with their kids, Archie and Lipidana, and they can go wherever they please in peace without being hounded or harassed by the tabloid media. No one knew that Megan went back to Immaculate Heart, you know, high school. Nobody knew that. Nobody knew that. We are now being told right now by Megan herself. By Megan herself. And I'm loving this time that we are living in right now. We are by Megan and Prince Harry can inform us of anything directly from them and not from the UK Tower Press. Hello, members of Zisco Family TV. First of all, I want to say thank you for all your support that you give us to our channel. We don't take it for granted that you support this channel. I want to say thank you from the bottom of our hearts for lending out your support and fighting against injustices, supporting Prince Harry and Meghan, showing them love, Love will always triumph over evil, and for that I say thank you. Good will always prevail over bad. Thank you so much for all your support. Thank you so much for joining this community, this amazing community of Zesco Family TV. I love you so much, family, from the bottom of my heart, and I wish you all the best. May you have a great, great day, and I hope that you enjoyed this video and learned a lot, a lot of things. With that and so much more, 
stay tuned to our next video leave a comment below like and subscribe love your family always and forever sayonara